In this video, we're going to build a simple app or game or program or whatever you want to call it using the things that we have learned so far. It's going to include variables, if statements, and browser functions and more. So let's get started. First, let's create a new file. Let's just call it lesson4 here. So let's do lesson-4.js. Let's change, save it. Let's change this to lesson4 right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a game that basically asks you three questions and then gives you a score uh, as you go through the quiz. So let's just follow along. I'm going to just explain it to you as we go. So first, let's create a variable called let's uh, var should play game. And this is just going to be a, let's make this a confirm dialog. So what this variable will do, it's going to hold the value of the uh, thing that the user enters into the confirm dialog. So let's say, do you want to play a game? So this will just be the start of our game. If we refresh our browser, you'll see that a confirm dialog is here with an OK or cancel. And then let's just kind of see what happens when we log out should play game right here. So if we log out should play game, uh, if we press OK, it's going to be true. If we log out cancel, it'll be false. So let's say if should play game, so this is going to be if should play game is true, we're going to log um, welcome to the game. So let's try that right here. We press OK. It says welcome to the game. And if, let's say else, so if they press cancel, let's console log goodbye. Let's test that out. They press cancel, it says goodbye. Great. Now, let's ask them for their name. So let's say var name equals prompt. So prompt is going to ask them to enter something into an input. Let's say what is your name? And then let's say, uh, after that, let's console log um, hello and then plus their name. So let's see what that looks like. Do you want to play a game? Welcome to the game. What is your name? Let's say it's Michael and then it'll say hello Michael. Now let's define two other variables. Let's define variables called total asked. That's going to start at zero. So we've asked zero questions so far. Let's say our total correct is also going to be zero. We're going to increment these as they go through the game. Oops. So let's do this. And then now let's create our first question. And let's create a variable called the first answer. So this is going to be the first answer that they enter into the prompt. So let's say prompt. Let's make the question, what is the name of the primitive type hello? And first thing we're going to do, since we've asked our first question, we're going to say total asked. We're going to increment it by one by doing the plus plus shorthand. And then we're going to say if the first answer is equal to string, we are going to increment. So if it's correct, we're going to increment the total correct. So we'll do plus plus there. And then we will say, let's console log, uh, you have gotten. And then we're going to say total correct. And then plus, so this is called string concatenation. We are joining together strings and variables and then total asked. So we're going to give them the number correct out of the no total that we've asked so far. Um, and we'll say correct so far. So let's see what this looks like. Let's say, do you want to play a game? Welcome to the game. What is your name? Michael. What is the name of the primitive type hello? Let's say string. Enter. And then it says in the console, you have gotten one out of one correct so far. So great. That game works. Let's just see what happens if we uh, type in something else. If we type in the wrong answer, let's say it's we type in number. You'll see that it doesn't do anything when we get it wrong. So we actually want this to show up outside of the if statement. So whether they get it right or wrong, we want to show them how many they got right or wrong. So let's try that now. Let's try to get it wrong this time. So let's say Michael. And let's say number here. Now it correctly says you have gotten zero out of one correct so far. Now let's go on to our second question. And our second question is going to be, uh, let's do the same thing here. Actually, let's First comment this so we can block this out, make it more clear. Let's say this is the first question. And then let's just copy this entire block and then we can edit uh, what we want for our second question. So let's call this second question right here. And then let's change the first answer variables. I'm going to use um, sublime shortcut here to edit both of these at once. It's the command D. And then let's make this question right here. Uh, what? Is, let's make this a math question so that we can do some, use the browser function number. So let's say what is 2 plus 3. And then we're going to increment the total asked again, which will make it 2. And then second answer, 
we'll say if, since uh, what they enter here is going to be a string, because everything that you enter into a prompt is a string, we're going to need to convert it to a number. So let's convert the second answer to a number first by doing that. And then we'll say if it equals 5, because that's what 2 plus 3 is, we're going to increment the total correct again. And then we'll just console log the same thing again down here. Let's try that out. Press OK here. What is your name? Michael. What is the name of the primitive type hello? Let's say string. And then we'll say 5 right here. And then it correctly says you have gotten 2 out of 2 correct so far. Let's see what happens if we enter in a wrong number, wrong answer. Let's type, try typing John here. So hello John, uh, string, let's try typing in zero, and it correctly says you have gotten one out of two correct so far. Great, our quiz is going really well so far. And then let's just do our third and final question for this quiz. And let's make this the third question. And then let's change these to third answer. And then let's make this uh, let's just do something a little bit different here. Let's say submit an empty text box. This way we can test out our um, ability to check falsy things inside of this if statement. So, so basically we want to say if there's nothing in the text box, they get it correct. So we could do if third answer equals an empty string since that's what it actually will be. But there's a shorter way to do this, which is the normal way to do it or the better shorter way to do it. We can put an exclamation point in here. Basically, this is saying that if third answer does not exist or if it's falsy, uh, then this will evaluate to be true because if this is false or empty string, uh, the exclamation point will actually make this into a true. Then we're going to increment the total correct here. So let's try that right here. Do you want to play a game? Let's say Michael. Oh, let's say Sam this time. And then string, one out of one correct, five. And then let's submit an empty text box. And you got all three correct. Let's try that again with a non-empty text box to see what happens. Let's say Sarah, and then string, five, and let's type something in here. You'll see that we got the last one wrong here. So that's the end of our simple game or app. What you can do now is you can try to edit this to customize it to be your own game. Maybe you can add on more questions or you can change these questions up here. And then once you've done that, you can move on to the next lesson.